Hey friends, welcome back to Francesca's Books. My name is Francesca, these are my books and here we talk about all things thriller books. Today's video is my September reading wrapped and my October TBR and this includes some of the best books that I've read this year so far. We are unfortunately back on the lemon and honey. I feel like my voice is gonna go again very soon but this time it's kind of my own fault because when my voice has been starting to go, I've not rested, I've just gone out and done everything as normal, if not worse, so we don't have any sympathy for me anymore. But anyway, back to the books. So I was thinking of splitting my September reading wrapped and October TBR into two videos and I might do this from next month because I feel like every month I'm having like more and more to say, the more that like I'm enjoying like my YouTube platform and like talking to you guys more in depth. So let me know if you prefer that style. Obviously they would come out on two different dates, I wouldn't post them like at the same time anymore so maybe it might be more tricky for you guys to find just I don't know let me know what you think but without further ado there is literally nothing more painful than having like a really bad reading month so six out of these eight books that I read this month are four star or above so I feel like you're gonna get some really good recommendations out of this like if nothing else just take these and enjoy them and thank me later so the first book that I read in September was Beautiful Ugly by Alice Feeney she very very kindly signed this for me I have mentioned this in a few videos now because I'm still so taken aback that Alice Feeney herself was like, would you like one? And just sent it to me and signed it. And it's this gorgeous. So this doesn't actually come out till January 2025, which is why I'm even more excited to tell you guys what I think. So this follows Grady, who is a writer. He's kind of struggling, but he gets some really good news, rings his wife and they're on the phone while she is driving. And then the phone just kind of like cuts out and he goes to find her and the door's open, the car isn't crashed, the phone's still there, but she isn't. So he's grieving. He's really not having a good time. He's also an author. So he's having to churn out like another book. So his publisher sends him to this like really remote island in Scotland to like just try and get his thoughts together, work on his book and that's when he thinks he starts seeing his wife again. He's literally convinced he's going crazy basically. So when I first picked this up it wasn't like an immediate yes from me, this definitely was a bit more of a slower read, obviously the intro is like really fast paced but after that it did take a little while for me to get into it but honestly this is one of my fa new favourite Alice Feeney books, it just absolutely is. This is literally so haunting and has the most unreliable male narrator ever and a series of really badass women like you couldn't really want much more. So I I gave Beautiful Ugly by Alice Feeney a 4.5. Then I actually read another advanced copy and this time it was John Mars's book that's due out in March 2025 and it is You Killed Me First. This was by far the best read of September. By far the best book I've read in a very long time actually. It was a straight five star. Honestly it's touching on a six star. It was just absolutely amazing. I am going to really struggle to do this justice on how good it is. So it follows a woman who literally wakes up in a burning bonfire. Like insane opening and then it flicks back to I think about 10 months later when Liv moves into Anna and Margot's neighborhood and there's just tension from day one like these three women are in each other's grills they are not having a good time without completely spoiling it I can't really say much more than that but these three women just go into this like insane like series of games and just like a web of absolute lies each of them was my favourite at one point as well, which I think is really interesting, um, but this was incredible. It's just everything you could want from a thriller, like the plot twists were fantastic, the characters were fantastic, the pace was fantastic. John Mars puts like mini plot twists throughout the book, which you guys know because I say it all the time about how much I love that. Then I read a couple of Riley Sega books to finish off his backlist. I've been going to do this for a long time, but another author's backlist that I just really didn't want to finish because I enjoy his books so much. But firstly, I read Last Time I Lied, which is set in a summer camp. So I gave this book four stars. It follows Emma, who returns back to this summer camp that she attended like 15 years ago. And when she was there, like as a teenager, the people that she was like rooming with all went missing. So she's like invited back as an art counsellor, like to kind of give back to like this situation it's like reopening for the first time and she goes she's like I'm going to investigate like what actually happened but when she gets there even more people go missing. I feel like there's just so many layers to this story like it was absolutely brilliant for that. It was also a really good like summer thriller like it's not often that summer thrillers are done right but this one it definitely was. There was like this aspect that was like the camp was set next to like a big asylum situation or near an asylum or there's something to do with it and I just thought that would have been so much cooler if like that aspect was explored as well and the fact that it wasn't while I was reading it I was like surely like that's the plot twist do you know what I mean? but I don't know. Really enjoyed it, not my favourite Riley Sager and it gave it four stars. And then the other Riley Sager book I read was Final Girls. This was the very, very last one that I had to read and this one was amazing. This one I gave a four and a half. And you know, the main reason I like this, which isn't my normal style at all, is because I really, really liked our female main character never happens. I'm all about the plot and I'm all about the plot twist and I'm all about the guessing. But our main character Quincy was such a badass who also like owned up to her mistakes. 
queen. So Quincy was this final girl who survived a massacre like 10 years ago. This cop like rescued her who's still like in her life now. And then there's these other two girls who she knows of, knows somewhat, who were also in like similar situations. And they were all together like labeled the final girls. But then one day one of them just turns up at her house and is like, I want to like connect, like I'm worried, etc, etc. But Quincy's just like, but this is so random, like why are you actually here? And the story just kind of goes from there. Everyone's main criticism on this book is that it's quite slow, but I don't think it was that slow. I mean, it wasn't like the most fast paced, like intense book I've ever read, but I definitely wouldn't label it as slow. I also feel like reading this in like the autumn time was like a perfect time to do it because that really, really brought out the vibes. Like at one point, these two women like go to Central Park to like walk in the night and I could literally just like, feel the vibe of it. I also really, really misjudged where this was going. And while the ending made a lot of sense and I did like it in some ways, in others, I was just like, oh completely heartbroken. If you've read it, I feel like you all know what I mean without me completely spoiling it. Then next, I absolutely needed like a proper palette cleanser. So I went to Greece at the start of this month and I read that there. And the next book is You Me On Vacation by Emily Henry. This was kind of a bit of a second chance for Emily Henry for me because I really didn't enjoy Beach Read. And it's probably quite an unpopular opinion, but I just didn't, just didn't like it, didn't vibe with it. I read Happy Place and did really like that. So I thought I'm gonna give her like a third chance to see if she's actually like not on one of these end of the scales. And I loved it. 4.5. So the actual premise, yeah, is quite unrealistic. So it follows Poppy and Alex who go on a vacation together every summer and have done for the last 10 years, but they're not together and they don't speak when they're not on this vacation. So I mean, probably wouldn't happen. But for like the holiday vibes, it was just perfect for what it was. It was really cute. It was really well written. I just, yeah, I just really had a good time with it. I also really wanted to mention here that Emily Henry as well did such a good job about this concept of like achieving your goals and still not being satisfied. Like our female main character really channeled that. And I think that just really related to me. I think that's why I gave it like such a high rating as well, because this girl had like her dream New York apartment, her dream job, like everything was just like exactly as she'd ever dreamed. And then she still just wasn't happy. Like she was still just like reaching for more. And I feel like I kind of hit that point as well. Like dream job, really, really happy with everything. Like life is just good, but like you're always kind of looking at what's next. I don't know if anyone else can relate to that. But anyway, enough about me. The next book is a really, really good read for October as well, if you haven't read this yet. And it is The Sundown Motel by Simone St. James. I've been gonna read this book for so long, been saving it nearly all year to read at this time of year. And I'm so glad that I did. So this follows Viv who worked in the Sundown Motel in the eighties. And there was just all this like creepy, spooky vibes going on. And it turns out she was, she went missing. She was unalive. We don't know what happened to her and then Carly her niece 35 years later goes to like investigate what happened to her everyone's like you are crazy and I mean she kind of is my only like small qualm with this book was at the start I did struggle to get into like both points of view because Carly and Viv are quite similar and they have a similar voice as well as being like in quite similar places in their lives so sometimes they did slightly mix up the characters but I feel like as soon as I got into it it was fine this was spooky but without it being like too paranormal like this was the perfect balance for October and honestly, my draw dropped about three times while reading this. It was brilliant. Amazing plot twists. Then next, I'd been trying to get my hands on a copy of this for about three months, no exaggeration, because of all the amazing reviews I'd seen on it. And it is Instance Around the House by Josh Malaman. And I'm going to say, I'm sorry, but I was disappointed quite disappointed honestly. Now I don't know what I expected because this is a horror book. It's light horror but it's still horror. So I maybe should have taken the reviews with a pinch of salt and I now have a very clear distinction in my head between a thriller and horror and you'll notice that I did kind of border that way in this month's like wrap up and that is not going to happen again next month because I've decided I just like my thrillers like I've been trying to diversify but I just like what I like. So this follows an eight year old girl who has a normal home life mum and dad and she goes to bed every night and then like she talks to this person called Other Mummy in her closet and it's supposed to be really, really spooky and she tells a story from like her point of view of an eight year old, which I do think was really interesting as well. Like I'm glad I pushed myself to read this and I'm glad I did challenge myself in that way, but I just wouldn't recommend it. The mum in this book as well was just an absolute piece honestly, like one of the worst human beings I've ever read. And I read a lot of books. And also I just didn't feel myself reaching for it. Like I feel like this would have made a really good film, not a book. But the positives were that it had a lot of depth and I didn't expect that. I expected it to be quite a lighthearted story, but there's a lot of ways that you could interpret different things that happen in this book, which 
did give it a slightly higher rating than I would have given it originally, but I did end up on a three star, and I think that's fair. I was going with maybe a two and a half to start, but I think a three star is fair enough. And then the final book I read this month was a BA Paris book, and it was The Dilemma. This was like the second to last book, I think, that I have of hers to read, so I thought I would give it a go. I read it on my Kindle, and I did fly through it, but probably not for the right reasons. So I didn't realise, firstly, this isn't really a thriller. It's more like a psychological contemporary story that's also quite sad. So it follows a husband and wife duo, and they basically both have a really big secret that they're keeping from each other, but it's only told over the course of one night, so like every hour they're getting more and more panicked about telling each other this secret, for at the end to just be like, oh, I have a secret, oh, I have a secret too. And that was like the whole plot. It was just kind of sad, honestly. Like the events were pretty tragic. Um, no one really got a happy ending. Yeah, it was was pretty brutal. And I also had no sympathy whatsoever for like the female main character in this story. She saved up money her entire life, like until she was 40, to have a 40th birthday party for herself. And that's what she spent the savings on. And she was like, oh, I never got the wedding that I wanted. So I've saved up tens and tens of thousands of pounds to throw this 40th party for myself. I mean, talk about selfish. I don't know. I don't know. Just, bad vibes all around. So I ended up giving this one a two and a half and I think that's fair, like straight down the middle, wasn't good, wasn't bad, bang in the middle. So that was my September wrapped. My favourite book of this month, hands down, without a shadow of a doubt, was You Killed Me First by John Mars. Absolutely brilliant. As soon as this comes out, you guys need to get your hands on a copy, like ASAP. And without further ado, these are the books I'm going to read in October. First up is Listen for the Lie, and I have had my eye on this for the longest time. Now it's finally out in paperback, I'm going to give it a read. I've also seen so many good reviews of this. I mean, I don't know if anyone's seen the American cover. I'll pop it here if I can find it, but it is so much nicer. This makes it look like very, like, cartoony like almost like a comedic thriller but i've been told it's not because i do not like those kinds of books as you guys know so it follows our female main character who's always been accused of her best friend's unaliving and then a true crime podcaster comes to town so she has to return to like try and tell her series of events i am really really excited to read this but i'm so scared and be really disappointed <laughs> then next up i'm going to read the pumpkin spice cafe this is definitely more like a contemporary a rom-com a palate cleanser but i mean how can you not read this in october like challenge failed. So this follows our female main character who inherits the pumpkin spice cafe. She goes and she moves in from like her big city life in Boston. And she meets this farmer who like supplies the cafe with all the food, I imagine. Um, and they just like really hit it off. But they don't want to hit it off. So basically every rom-com ever. So when I bought this, you guys on my Instagram were like, oh, that one's really spicy. And I didn't know that when I bought it, but I'm also like kind of not mad about it. It's been a while since I've read a book like that. So I'm going to give it a go, keep you updated. There is also a sequel to this book, which is set in like the same world, the same town. I don't know. So when I finish this, if I really, really like it, I might read the next one as well. I've not decided yet. So the Cinnamon Bun Bookstore is the second book in this series. I don't actually know who it follows or if it relates to the next book, but if it's a similar vibe i'm probably gonna be here for it this one is a brand new release as well so the pumpkin spice cafe i think came out last year maybe the year before i don't know this one has literally just come out like october 2024 and that's how i'd heard about it and then obviously got these together so this is actually so weird because i was talking about this with a friend the other day that spicy books or books with like more that are more than closed door should have like a spice rating i feel like i should just pattern this but this book has i don't know if you can see there we go. It says spicy books with four chilies. And I was like, it should have like a one to five chili rating. So you know what you're getting into. And like, I appreciate that wouldn't appeal to like the larger, like general public, but anybody who's a reader probably wants to know, like, it's actually quite difficult to know when you're going in, like either because you really don't like spice or you're after something spicy, but then if it was on like an objective scale, like imagine how much better that would be. I might do something about that. Anyway, moving on. Next up, I'm going to read The Prisoner by B.A. Paris. This is the last B.A. Paris book I've got to read and then I can rank all of her books for you as well. I have never really felt like drawn to this one, if I'm being completely honest. And I don't think it has like the best score on Goodreads. Like it's one of her lower rated books, but I am going to give it a go. So this follows our female main character who like lives a luxurious life, basically. And she has a husband, a really expensive apartment, la la la, all the rest of it. And then one day she's kidnapped, wakes up in like, a dark room has no idea where she is but then I think it's like a really weird twisted story of like she suddenly feels like safer with her captor than she did with her husband so what the blurb says but I mean I'm not sure how that would even work out a lot of B.A. Paris's book are like a lot more psychological suspense and thriller but I will very much keep you updated then sticking on the spooky theme this was I think on last month's TBR I'm not gonna lie but it's definitely gonna be read this month because it's like the last opportunity to do it and it is a cackle by Rachel Harrison and this just feels like the it book of October like you need to read this book kind of vibes and it follows a woman who moves from Manhattan to like upstate to a really small town she wants to get away she's just been dumped by a boyfriend etc etc and then she meets this 
woman who's just like a complete enigma and she's like i need to know more about her and i just absolutely love this i don't know how i haven't picked this up already when the back literally says a deliciously dark feminist tale of witches bad ex-boyfriends good coffee and friendly spiders at me rachel harrison so Rachel Harrison's books are renowned for being like a bit paranormal, like all of them. I don't think she's written anything that's not. So I don't know how I'm gonna feel about that, but even like the thriller girls that I follow love this as well. So I'm gonna give it a chance, I'm gonna give it a chance. Then I'm gonna read Wonderland by Jennifer Hillier and this has all like the spooky theme park vibes, which I have so been after. I've never managed to find a book like this. So I really, really hope that I like it. So it follows Wonderland that's like charming by day, like this gorgeous theme park, everyone's happy, everyone's smiling. And then by night, it's just like this super dark, creepy place and that is when a body is discovered and i don't know about you but i actually have wondered what theme parks look like at night when they're completely abandoned maybe that is the thriller girl in me but i just feel like i'm really really gonna like this one i've only read jar of hearts by this author before and i did like it i just didn't love it i think i gave it like a three and a half i just wasn't like you know when you're not reaching for a book like there's nothing wrong with it i couldn't really tell you why i didn't love it but i just didn't reach for it so I'm going to give this author another go. I didn't anticipate ever giving this author another go, but here we are because I like the concept. And then this month, I'm also going to read Nestlings by Nat Cassidy. This is actually a US import. I don't think you can get this in the UK, but I managed to get a copy of it somehow. So this follows a couple who moved to like a really fancy New York apartment building after a really traumatic childbirth of their daughter. And then they get there and the paranoia was bad before. And now it's like, off the scale and then their baby starts getting like these weird bite marks they keep hearing noises like i think it's going to be spooky af i also actually am going to new york at the end of this month so i might take this with me to like read while i'm there to like really just take in the vibes and then finally i think i may have put too many books on this list this month to be honest this is so ambitious now i'm like going through them all however next and finally is going to be haven't they grown by sophie hannah so this follows a woman who is back in the town where her ex-best friend used to live like dropping her kids off at like a football game or something and she decides to drive past the house just to be have a nosy i think honestly like i don't think there's any like malice in it and then she looks through the window and she sees that her kids are like exactly the same ages like they were three and five when she knew them like 12 years ago and now they're still three and five and she's like how is that even possible like how is that possible now i mean immediately i'm thinking well they're probably just different kids but that's the premise of the book so we'll go with it i feel like this is just going to be like quite an easy popcorn thriller type read which i feel like i might need i do have such a mixed bag this month so i feel like i'll reach for this when i've just kind of like hit a bit of a point you know you know what i mean so that is what i read in september and what i'm planning on reading in october and stay tuned guys because this month is going to be like incredible like i actually can't wait to update you i'm going to like a literary festival in mallorca and then i'm going to the states for 10 days to go around like various cities like down the east coast go book shopping i'm going to vlog it all like it's going to be such a fun time so i hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to like and subscribe as ever and let me know what your thoughts of the books we talked about today and i will see you soon